Howdy, y'all, and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jack, and I'm working on designing and building my own trading card sorter from the ground up. In this video, I'll be using AI to recognize Magic the Gathering cards. Given an image of any Magic card, I'd like the computer to determine that card's multiverse ID, an identifier that's unique to each printed Magic card. My last video attempted to solve this challenge using optical character recognition and image hashing. It kind of worked, but it was quite slow and cumbersome. So let's jump into a better solution. As you can see, I've published this demo code in the GitHub repository linked below, if you'd like to test it yourself. After downloading and unzipping the file, I'll start a new Jupyter Notebook terminal and open up the folder. The first code block imports the necessary libraries and defines our functions. I'm not going to go into detail about how this all works, I really just want to show the results here. We'll need to load the abbreviated database of Scryfall card entries that I've curated for this demo, and a list of valid multiverse IDs. From this list, we'll then select 100 random cards to use for the demo. The next step takes a while, and as it's running, I'll try to explain what's going on. In order for the neural network to properly recognize magic cards, we need to show it examples of what each card looks like. Now, we could just provide a perfectly scanned image of each card to train the network, but what happens in the real world when an image that is slightly different comes in? The network likely won't be able to recognize that card. To solve this issue, the code will make a number of distorted copies of each card. These copies may be rotated, desaturated, contrast adjusted, or even flipped upside down. All distortions are done at random so that the network will be able to properly recognize a card that isn't perfectly photographed. For each of the 100 cards in our randomly chosen sample set, I've saved three perfect scan copies and seven distorted copies. These cards are saved locally so that we can see them, but more importantly, they are converted into a single array that the neural network can interpret. The next code cell deploys the convolutional neural network on the generated image arrays. I admittedly am no expert here, so if you'd like to learn more about what's actually going on, see the link above. Generally though, the computer is using the images that we've created to find patterns and recognize features that are similar between cards. Training this network takes a significant amount of time and computing power, but actually using it will be much faster. It's also important to note some of the limitations of convolutional neural networks here. We're only asking it to learn what 100 magic cards look like. There are around 70,000 unique printings of English magic cards alone, and this exact process won't work at that scale for a wide variety of reasons. I'll fast forward through the rest of the training here, and at the end, you can see that it took around 17 minutes to train the network on just 100 images. As we move through epochs, or training cycles, you'll see the accuracy increases drastically. After the first cycle, the model had an accuracy of about 1%. After the fourth cycle, the accuracy is already close to 75%. Also interesting to note is that our accuracy reading exceeded 99% at the eighth epoch, meaning that the last two cycles didn't really add that much value. Now comes the fun part, where we can check to see how well the model performs. The code block here will go through each card in the testing folder, supply it to the neural network, and print the result. Wow, look at how quickly the model is able to go through all 100 cards, given I did use all of the perfect scan copies. Let's try that again using the distorted copies. All right, here we can see the model struggling a bit more. Overall, though, this solution is much faster and more effective than the OCR and image hashing based approach I tested earlier. If you've seen that video, you're probably calling me out right now for going easy on the neural network and not using cards that look near identical. So let's see how this strategy fares on the same set of cards that I used in that last video. I'll first load that list of multiverse IDs and then again process the images for use in the neural network. You can see now that we have quite a few cards that look very similar, even though they have different multiverse IDs. The card set that I'm using this time contains all printed versions of the cards Cancel, Lanoir Elves, and Giant Growth. I chose these cards in particular because they each have been printed multiple times. These printings may look similar, but have different multiverse IDs, making it a good challenge for any card recognition software to tell them apart. Let's once again deploy the convolutional neural network, this time on the new batch of images. Now that the model is finished training, let's test it out. First, with our perfect scan versions, you can see that the neural network still provides results very quickly, even though a larger portion are incorrect on this card set. 
Even the incorrect guesses, though, are pretty darn close. Let's take a look at card 19, which was confused with card 21. Yeah, pretty darn close. And again, let's try using the distorted copies. Predictably, the results are worse, but this is still much better than what we were seeing in the last video. Like I said earlier, this exact approach is not directly scalable to implement in the card recognition software, but I do hope to use it still. My next video will be focusing more on the physical design of the card sorter, but after that, I'll be talking more on the software side. I've linked a sign up for the project email list below, and be sure to subscribe as well if you're enjoying the content. That's all I have. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.